Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster jumping back on here with a uh, quick update video on this uh, beautiful Saturday. It's about 4 o'clock here, California time. Uh, let's see what we got. Something popping out on the far side of the sun here on the eastern limb, kind of playing peekaboo out here. We got a, a pretty strong flare, solar flare kicking up here across the eastern limb. Uh, right now, it is registering up into the M flare category. Looks like about an M 1.1 or so. It's possible this thing could be a little bit stronger due to the, uh, well, the blocking out of the uh, the sunspot itself. Probably not getting the full measurement uh, from this large solar flare that's kicking up. Either way, that is producing a radio blackout across portions of the Pacific here, in North America as well. Uh, looks like that's centered directly over Hawaii uh, as far as that radio blackout goes. Not a strong one, but uh, again, this is not directly visible. Uh, we're just seeing barely the upper portion of the flare on the eastern limb of the sun. But that is affecting some uh, high frequency and low frequency uh, navigation systems. They're centered mostly again out into the center of the Pacific. Uh, there is the X1.1 X-ray flare class. And uh, they were kind of forecasting here, 90% chance for C flare, M flare at 20, and X flare around 1. That's mainly due to the uh, lack of complexity with all of these sunspots across the solar visible disk. The one that uh, we're kind of looking at right now with that strong M flare, well, we I can't even see it. This is the magnetogram image that would show the, uh, uh, the complex magnetic fields that the sunspots may harbor. But again, that sunspot is not even partially visible. Not even partially. But this solar flare definitely can uh, raise up above the sunspot level and produce this type of uh, this type of view and reading there on the chart. So uh, I think it may have been a little bit more powerful than a M1.1, but we'll continue to watch that. Either way, it looks like we could be entering into a uh, a time of activity. Elevated solar weather activity here. It's been pretty quiet here in uh, recent days. Let's see what's going on here. Are we live? Yes, we are. Um, so hopefully this will bring to life the uh, solar weather activity out here once again. We'll continue to watch that. Either way, it's uh, pretty spectacular to look at. Every time I mention something about... Uh, some solar flare activity everything freezes up there we go that's a little weird <laughs> all right guys um so that's the solar weather activity kind of want to jump into well tropical depression 10 which will eventually once it hits tropical storm will be idalia uh, idalia beautiful name uh it is expected to at least reach a category one hurricane strength here in the gulf of mexico very warm waters so uh, but it doesn't have a whole lot of time here to develop and gain a lot of steam. But we know with warm waters, uh, there is some resistance up here in the uh, wind patterns that that's going to be fighting against. Uh, but there is that possibility of seeing potentially something stronger above that Category 1 level for Florida. It looks like it is on cue here. Here's the cone of uncertainty. Um, with landfall inland here, it looks like maybe around... Well, that's 11, uh, that's going to be 11 o'clock Wednesday, but it's probably going to be obviously a few more hours before that, um, where it actually reaches the, uh, the panhandle here of the Florida region, probably a little bit stronger than that as well. So a little uncertainty, right? That's why there's that huge gap right here. Um, not a hundred percent certain where this is, uh, or how strong this is going to be the exact model or exact path. Where this hurricane not hurricane yet but uh, a tropical depression 10 it is gaining some strength but we're going to watch where this goes here in the coming days right now as of uh, the 1400 time frame 30 mile per hour sustained winds um and that's expected to increase tomorrow as it heads up northward uh hurricane status one or category one right here uh definitely gonna watch it this thing could definitely uh kick up um, really quickly 
Here's the current infrared imagery. In fact, this thing's already gaining some strength since this morning. Look at that. Almost got an eyewall on it. Um, are we looking at the right one? Oh, no, we're not. That's Franklin. I was going to say that thing blew up quickly. So we're looking at 90... 90... Uh, where did it go here? Hold on a second. Oh, we're at the uh, 10. There we go. All these different numbers. As soon as they hit a different wind speed or category, then they rename them something. So either way, okay. There we go. Here's the correct image. I'll put this into motion here and look at this un what somewhat unorganized area of thunderstorm activity. Look at these high tops out here just bubbling from that warm water. I would love to be out there. I'm not even joking. I'm a big time thunderstorm and weather lover. Uh, so right now, area of circulation... Um, looks like that's going to be roughly right about in here. It is still very disorganized, but it is expected to strengthen and to get its stuff together before it uh, starts to head up northward. It looks like by tomorrow. I think that's what uh, where the uh, windy map go. Um, well, this is going to be Monday, 52 mile per hour wind. So. Tomorrow, we'll have to see how much more organized this system is and the position out here across the Gulf of Mexico. But again, I think uh, it's something to watch pretty closely here, guys, uh, as that could rapidly intensify. Here is the expected hurricane models, like far as the path goes. Now, most models here are in agreement that it will take it directly into Florida. There's no if and maybes or or any other direction all of these have a northward trend here whether it's uh, a little bit further west here along panhandle or a little bit further east um safe to say though that's going to head northward with that uh spaghetti model so to speak um 25 knot gusts gusts not available uh minimum central pressure still holding steady at 1006 and uh, again, it's just very disorganized, but it is expected to potentially reach. And this is scary because some of these models are forecasting a quick, rapid growth with Category 3 strength winds. That, uh, goodness, that might not be good here, right? Far as uh, its direction headed towards uh, Florida. Although most of these here, looks like the majority are, are uh, measuring right around the tropical storm, high-level high tropical storm, a uh, low-grade Category 1 hurricane. So that's, you know, we'll see what the models look like later tonight. These are always changing. Uh, and they have been increasing. So we'll continue to watch that um, for some development and movement. Right now it's just a huge cluster of uh, thunderstorms. Here's the uh, GEPS model. It's a different type of model uh, showing the tracks and minimum uh, pressure out here. Now, you know, it's this is a little bit more scattered. Uh, I'm not for certain if I want to agree with the uh, GEPS model, um, but the black line right here indicating the average, so to speak. Uh, dropping in pressure, obviously, that's going to be gaining some strength. 72 mile per hour winds, it looks like here. And, uh, you know... I think it's going to gain some steam. I think it's going to really kick up and potentially uh, be a little bit higher than what they're forecasting out here because these are very warm uh, Gulf waters out here. And, um, you know, it's depending on if it's stationary, how long it stays stationary uh, could have a major effect on the strength uh, before it takes off here to the north. So we'll continue to watch that uh, for some development for sure. Let's uh, kick this thing into motion, see what the forecast calls here from the ECMWF model. This is from the Windy site. Um, I utilize Windy. I use their premium version because, well, because it's cool. It's one of my more um, used weather models here. It, it gives you a lot of stuff. And I'm not joking. If you're a weather person, uh, even if you aren't a weather person, you could look at, uh, you know, temperature, dew point, humidity, uh, freezing altitude. It's got a whole lot of stuff. Uh, when it comes to forecast models so we're just going to look at uh we're going to look at the winds out here the wind gusts and uh 
put this into motion here over the next couple days and see what we have. Uh, I'm just going to go a little bit here. See, it wants to sit around here till Sunday before probably making that northward trend. Notice that? Once you start getting development and circulation here, that's when you can see this thing start to move. Looks like Monday, 1 p.m. or so, uh, we're going to be on the move. Monday night, a little bit further north. There's the eye wall, though, right here, showing that uh, on this map. It does have this up here, though. Not for sure why it's off center, but uh, should be roughly about here. Category 1, Tuesday, 75 mile per hour sustained winds. And again, that path is just, well, this one right here looks like it wants to take it more towards the uh, areas of Tampa uh, and the western coast here of Florida. Now, that is the strongest area of a hurricane right along the eastern eyewall area. Most of the time, it's the northeastern southeastern area that's where the most of the convection is the winds and uh well that wouldn't be the best news there for those folks because that is a pretty populated area uh for florida here there's already some chat about it so we're going to be covering this daily uh, but this weather model looks like it's trending a little bit more east along this cone of uncertainty uh, and of course we'll continue to watch that rainfall you know aside from the wind i think the rainfall is going to be the big deal Let's see here if we can, uh, I'm going to bring up the tropical tidbits weather model here for the southeast. And we're going to check out the uh, precipitation and moisture. This is just a guesstimate now, you know, what these forecast models are uh, coming up with. Total accumulated precipitation, aside from your typical thunderstorm activity out there, which Florida gets a lot. Uh, you'll see when the hurricane comes in there. Now this, this weather model, which is the GFS model, kind of keeping that path over here towards the, um, the panhandle area. Obviously, uh, getting a little bit of activity across Tampa as well on the western coast with some rainfall. But it looks like the brunt of this... Might be right about here in that orange. We're looking at, uh, well, that's the heaviest precipitation up here, around 10 inches or so, maybe more. And that is going to be uh, not a good area for the Tallahassee area, it looks like, in Florida. That would be uh, almost a direct impact, maybe uh, in between the Panama City and the uh, Tallahassee area, it looks like, around this region for the most of the rainfall uh, accumulation. This hurricane out here, beautiful strong hurricane but uh this is not going anywhere near land in fact if you put it in fast motion here it just kind of gets circulated back out to the atlantic and um it looks like it looks like that idalia uh the one we're, that we're mentioning right now which is tropical depression 10 could continue to gain into a hurricane once it gets back out into the Atlantic. But we'll watch that. That's a ways out. Either way, um, you know, there's definitely some signs of trouble out there in the tropics here. And we're watching Florida for an impact area. Roughly, uh, it, this weather model showing uh, maybe around Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, depending on how quickly this develops how fast the wind, uh, wind speeds pick up. Got a lot to do, or uh, got a lot to uh, look at before an exact time frame. Remember out here in California that uh, Hurricane Hillary rapidly intensified uh, to category four before coming into resistance here with the wind patterns and also uh, a little bit of the land interference out here. And of course, cooler water, cooler water out here across the Southern California area. Uh, pretty much destroyed that uh, hurricane and it uh, but it did reach Southern California as a tropical storm um, so yeah we'll continue to watch this see how uh, this develops and of course keep everyone updated on the uh, potential all right looks like we're coming down here from that uh, flare we did peak out at X 1.1 or uh, M 1.1 not X yet <laughs> M1.1, although I think it was a little bit stronger than that. There it is. Plain peekaboo out here on the eastern limb. Uh, earthquake activity out here today. Got Hawaii lighting up slightly across the Kilauea volcano. 
that's an area to watch obviously it is showing some signs of elevated unrest but no eruption yet we'll continue to monitor it of course and uh, report back on this a little bit later this evening with the uh, Saturday night update so make sure you guys uh, subscribe while you're here click that notification bell so you guys can get advised on when we go live and also when we upload videos here on the channel so have a good Saturday and enjoy the rest about 98 degrees here in Northern California where I live. Hopefully you guys are staying cool. And uh, we'll catch you guys a little bit later on tonight. Have a good one.